Middle School Percussion with Marcus Yeah. Hey guys, I'm Marcus. It's a beautiful day for music. It's a wonderful day for sound. Today we're going to be checking out the F scale and the F scale is super cool because it's the first time we get to use any of these in this top row. If you were uh, watching the last episode, we call this top row the accidentals. So it's super cool. Let's jump right into it. I'm gonna do some tap dancing with my fingers here on my notes. Starting on F, and if you remember, F is the one right to the left. Ooh, rap song. F is the one right to the left of the three humps. Anyways, so let's try it here. I have F, I have G, I have A, and I'm gonna go to this top row right next to it, B flat, yeah. I have C, I have D, I have E, and F. Going back down, E, D, C, very nice. Going up back to that top row. B flat, yeah. A, I like it. <laughs> G, and then F. Now, we're gonna play this with our actual mallets, but first, let's go outside. outside. All right, so in the last video, we talked a little bit about legato strokes and how we want to move our mallet through the air nice and quick, and how we want it to stop back up at the top. Nice, smooth, even stroke. And we call that kind of stroke a legato stroke. Now that word sounds a little bit familiar because you might hear maybe your private teacher or your orchestra director, or maybe your music teacher say something like a legato sound. And what that means is smooth and connected. You'll hear a lot of uh, people sing in a legato style, which is very smooth. Um, but when we say that we play with this, uh, a legato motion with our sticks, that means that our sticks have a nice, even, smooth motion throughout the air. Even though when I hit this pad, it still sounds very sharp and pointed and everything. We're gonna put that in a little bit of an exercise here. So I'm gonna play eight of those on the right hand, and I'm gonna play eight of those on the left hand, and I'm still gonna play those in half notes. So I'm gonna be hitting every other beat on my trusty metronome here, the doctor. <laughs> Let's do it. So beautiful beads together here, my mallet heads. And I'm gonna turn those up, not too high right now. Very nice. And we're gonna do eight on each hand. Let's try it. One and two, and one, two, ready, and one, two, three, four, five, Six, make sure we're stopping at the top. Eight, one, two, very nice. Three, four, nice and relaxed. Six, seven, eight. Beautiful. And we wanna make sure that we stop back in our beautiful positions here that we started with. And just to make sure and check that I'm playing still in the middle, a lot of times I'll go back down to make sure that my beads are in a beautiful place. I like it, I like it. Let's turn them back up and do the same thing. One and two. And one, two, here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. I like it. Seven, eight, yes. One, two, three, four. Meet him back at the top. Six, seven, eight. Beautiful, beautiful. This time, I'm going to cut that in half, do a little remix here. And I'm going to do four of them per each hand. So four in the right hand and then four in the left hand. Let's try that. Starting with my mallets here at the bottom. I'm gonna turn these up, nice beautiful placement. Relax shoulders, relax neck, relax yeah. face. Ah. Let's do it. One and two and one, two, ready. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Again, one and two and one, two, Ready, and one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Beautiful, even wrist strokes. So I'm making sure that my wrist is actually doing this nice and smooth. It's like bouncing a little tennis ball 
here on my drum pad. I just happen to have some mallets in my hand. Now, if you notice that there's any tension in your arms here, or especially in the back part of your arm here, you really wanna make sure that you kinda of shake it out, kinda of wanna squirm a little bit, and then go right back to your beginning position. Because remember, any tension or any sort of tightness, any of that sort of cramping feeling for any percussionist or drummer is gonna make us slow, and it's not gonna let us to play for an extended period of time. Great job, guys. Hmm. That was some really cool information. So we're gonna play this with our mallets here. First time I'm gonna play it through with my left hand. Let's do it. We're gonna take this in quarter notes. Let's try it. So I have two, ready, and F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F down, E, D, C, B flat, A, G, F. Again, two, ready, and F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, E, D, C, B flat, A, G, F. Let's take this now with our right hand. Two, ready, and F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F, E, D, C, B flat, A, G, F. Again, two, ready, and F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. Back down, very nice right in the middle of every single note. Awesome. This time we're going to alternate. And if you remember, alternating just means that I'm gonna start on one hand and I'm going to switch hands every single time. So this first time we're gonna start on the right hand. Let's do it. One, two, ready, and. Right, left, right, left, very nice. Left, right, left, right, left, right. We'll do that again. Two, ready, and. Yep. Nice, beautiful, even sound. Making sure that our strokes are nice and even. Very nice. This time we're gonna start on the left hand. So a little bit of a, a little bit of a remix there. Starting on the left hand, and I'm still going to be switching hands every single time. Let's try it. One, two, ready, and. Very nice. Again, two, ready, and. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Very nice. You can go ahead and put your mallets down. A little bit of a tip for you. Anytime I put my mallets down, I'm gonna be putting them down either on some sort of cloth or towel. Sometimes people call them trap tables because uh, it might have a little lip on the end to keep your mallets from rolling. And a lot of times it'll have some sort of cloth or some sort of soft kind of surface in order to not make a lot of sound. If I don't have that option, I'm gonna try to put it on my actual instrument, but it's very important that I don't put my mallets on the instrument um, sideways. It's very easy for them to roll off, especially if somebody bumps the instrument. So I'm always gonna try to put those front to back, always front to back. Cool little pro tip for you there. All right, so we played our F scale, and what we're looking at here is trying to now incorporate that scale with that new note that we learned up on the top row, which we call the accidental. So we learned the B flat note then. 
So we're gonna take that and we're gonna put it into our actual music. Now, the really cool part when we actually play this is that there's two ways that your sheet music will tell you to go into the top row to play that note. You'll either have it all the way over to the left side of the paper, and uh, we call that the, the key signature. So you'll have it over in the key signature, and, and, and if you see that little B, that little B flat over there, then that means that every single B in the whole, in the whole piece, unless it tells you otherwise, is gonna be flat. Or sometimes it doesn't have anything over on the left side of the page. But when you actually get to a B, you'll see a little flat sign by it. So just know that both of those ways are totally fine to tell us when we need to go up to the top row. And it's a really cool and efficient way of letting us know exactly when we should go up there. Let's check out some, a, a few different songs. Uh, <laughs> let's, let's go to the studio. All right, guys, welcome to another studio time here. Once again, I am in the Logic Pro X, which is my digital audio workstation. We also call those a DAW, D-A-W. And what we're gonna do here is we're going to have another example that's in the key of C, and then we're gonna have an, a one that's in the key of F, which is the scale that we just learned. Let's go ahead and jump into the one that's based off of C here. Um, I'll go ahead and put it on the screen, ba-bam. And you'll immediately notice that there's no particular red flags when it comes to rhythm. Everything is a whole note. So that's fairly easy on that particular front. And everything, at least here in the beginning, is going to be right beside each other. So there's not any interval jumps or leaps. A lot of times when there's not any big intervals, we'll call something stepwise, as in it's either one note up or one note down. So a lot of the notes that we have here in the beginning just either go up a note or they go down one note, which makes it very easy um, for us to read. Now, when we get towards the end a little bit, notice that we do have a few jumps. And then we have even bigger jumps <laughs> towards the end. Very nice. I'll give you a few more seconds to check that out. And then we'll play through it here. It's going to give you eight clicks in the beginning. Let's do it. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and... All right, all right, how did you do? <laughs> We're gonna take it again. So if, if you happen to have had a few problems on it, um, don't worry. Um, music is a language, just like anything else. So sometimes it, take us a, it takes us a little bit to be able to speak a language, and then it takes us a little bit of time to be able to um, actually read the language, which probably happened with you when it comes to English Hello. or maybe some other language like Spanish Hola. or French. Bonjour. So when I'm reading this, as long as you continue to move forward, and if you happen to miss a note, um, make sure your eyes don't lose where you are on the page. I'll give you a few seconds to check out maybe one or two areas here that you happen to mess up on, and then we'll do the same thing one more time. And let's do it. You'll have once again eight clicks and then we'll be ready to go. And five. 
five, six, seven, eight. Very nice. So hopefully you had a little bit of a, of a better time <laughs> on that one. If you didn't, don't worry. These things sometimes take a little bit of practice. And speaking of practice, let's do the same kind of idea, but this time with this next um, particular uh, excerpt here. So this is gonna be in the key of F. So if you remember here, a few minutes ago, we did the F scale. And the cool thing about the F scale is that we go up to that top row once. And you'll notice that in this particular exercise, I can tell that I go up to the top row once um, or on one, one particular note because it shows me over here in the key signature. So in the key signature, there's a little flat sign on the note B. So every time I get to a B, it's going to be a B flat. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, let's go ahead and try to find some of those B flats here just to make sure that we are aware of where some of them are. Okay. All right. Nice. Now, let's look for maybe some other um, little roadblocks or red flags here in the piece immediately your eyes should be drawn to the different rhythm that we have here kind of halfway through you see that we have some half notes now the easy thing about those half notes is that they all are right beside each other which means that there are no interval changes when the rhythm speeds up a little bit all of these notes just go down the scale which makes it a little bit easier for us. And if we go ahead and look forward to the end of the piece a little bit here, you'll notice that we have more interval jumps. So a little bit of skipping. And then we also have some half notes at the end of the piece. Very cool. I'll give you a few more seconds to look at some of this, and then we'll take a few goes at it. Here we go, eight clicks and we're in. And five, six, ready, and. <laughs> and it truly is a beautiful day for music and it's a wonderful day for sound how did you do how did it go for you on your first read here we're going to do it again and for me to point out just a few things for you here that could be some potential stumbling blocks thing number one is making sure that when we get to the half notes that we counted those correctly so if this is my click i'm going to be thinking about one, two, three, one, two, three, four. Notice that I was saying beats two and beat four kind of 
a little bit lower. And the reason that I do that is I, I still want to make sure that I'm counting the notes that I'm not necessarily playing. Uh, we call that subdivision. So even though I'm not playing beat two or I'm not playing beat four, I'm still hearing the space of those notes in my head. It's very important to what we do as percussionists and as what we do as musicians in general. Let's take this back and I'll give you a few seconds to look at some of the places that you feel like you need to get a little bit better on here. And then we'll read this one more time. All right, let's do it, people. So once again, you have eight clicks, and then we're going to be playing the, the actual song. And five, six, seven, eight. Awesome. I hope that it went a little bit better for you. And even if it didn't, one of the beautiful things is that we can always practice and get better. Music is a language and it's very difficult to learn a new language, but it's always very rewarding. Whether the new language you're learning is Spanish or French or music, it'll always open up new doors of possibility for us from a social standpoint, so we can talk to new people, and from a creative standpoint, it gives us a way to have new sounds and new ways to express things that we feel. I'll see you in the next studio time. <laughs> All right, that was super cool. It is truly a, a beautiful day uh, for music, and it's a wonderful day for... What? Oh. <laughs> Man, hey, it's time to do some claps. Let's go, baby! If you gun go claps today, yeah. three, two, one, get it. Have you done your claps today? Have you done them? Have you done your claps today? Have you done them? I want some chop chops, chop chops. I want some chop chops, chop chops. Have you done your claps today? Have you done them? Have you done your claps today? Have you done them? I want some chop chops, chop chops. I want some chop chops, chop chops. Yeah. Have you done them? Have you done your class today? Have you done them? I 
want some chop chops, chop chops. I want some chop chops, chop chops. I have done my claps today. I have done them. I have done my claps today. I have done them. I'm getting chop chops, chop chops. I'm eating chop chops and, and shake them out. Whew. <laughs> I was not ready for that one sun. Anyways, hey, it is truly a beautiful day for music and it's a wonderful day for sound. Feel free to drop me some comments. Let me know how some of these scales are going for you and things. And I hope to see you guys in the next video. Deuce. Middle school percussion with Marcus. Yeah.